Hey guys, welcome back. It's Louie here from Wood Unlimited. And in today's video, we're diving into the fascinating world of image tracing and engraving using Lightburn software. Image tracing and engraving can take your images and your designs and turn them into stunning laser engraved works of art. So let's get started. All right, so now we're over in Lightburn, and the very first step that we need to take is we need to import our image. Because we're using a file that is not a Lightburn file type, we're going to use the import command rather than using the open command. So we're going to click on import. The file that we're going to use for this particular example is going to be this one called Snowflake 1. This is a PNG file. When you open it up, there are a couple of things that you can observe. The first thing is that there's a red border perimeter all the way around the outside and that's going to be dependent upon which layer you have set over here on the right hand side. The other thing that you need to observe is that this is mode is set to image. There's not much we can do to change that. If you look here when you look at the mode normally you could choose fill or you could choose line or you could choose line and fill but because this is an image file image is the only option that we have. So we cannot go in to each individual component within the snowflake and change the cut settings or change the engraved settings. So that's the reason why we need to trace. All right, so the next thing you want to do is adjust your image to the size that you'd like it. You still have an opportunity to do this later, but you'd like to get it to a size where you can see it and work with it and do everything that you need to do. All right, so step three, now we're going to trace the image. So we're going to select the image and then we're going to right click and then from the drop down box we're going to choose trace image. So this will bring up your trace image window. There's some slider bars here that you can use to adjust your trace to get the proper settings. For an image that is simple like the snowflake, the standard settings that you come into the menu with normally work pretty well. Sometimes for a more complex design, you may need to use these slider bars to make an adjustment to filter out certain shapes or maybe some noise that might be in the photo. The best thing I can tell you to do is really just play around with these settings and see what works best for you. Once we're happy with it, we're going to click OK. All right, so now back into the main light burn window. We want to take a look at our trace. So we actually have two different objects here. We have the original and we have the traced object. So we can just drag the original off the top. And I'm going to go ahead and just delete it. Okay, now that the original is out of the way, we have got the file that we've traced that we can work with. Now this has all been grouped as one group. So if we want to adjust the individual settings for each component of the snowflake, what we'll need to do is select the snowflake, right click, and then choose ungroup. What that allows us to do is select and adjust the settings for each individual component separately. We can set these to different layers if we'd like to cut part of this or engrave part of this. So now I'm going to show you how to set this all to one layer that's an engraving layer. So at the bottom, on the bottom toolbar, you have all your layers that you have selected. For me, layer 3 I have selected as an engrave layer or fill. So it's in fill mode. So now that I've selected the entire object, chose layer 3, I've got fill on the right hand side and it tells me what my settings are for that layer. But let's say I wanted to cut out part of the image and engrave part of the image. What I can do now is let's say I just want to cut out these center pieces. I can select one, hold shift, select the other, continue to hold shift and select all of the components that I want to change the engrave or cut settings for. So now just the center portions are selected. I'm going to change that layer to red which is my line setting which is actually for cut. I'm going to right click now and I'm going to do a preview so you can see what this would look like if you were sending it out to the laser. So in this instance what would happen is the outer portions that are dark black on the snowflake would be engraved and the intersections will be set to line or to cut. So then you would cut out the center and the outside would be engraved. Alright, 
So the next step would be really just knowing your laser and knowing your materials. So for my laser and the materials that I commonly use, which would be quarter inch birch in this particular scenario, I know that for my red layer, my cut layer, my line layer, I would need a speed of six and 40% of my laser's power. This would be set to output. I want to show the graphics and I want air assist on when I do my cutting. For the outside pieces where we're just going to engrave, I know that the speed that I typically use on this type of material is 316.7 millimeters per second at 35% of the machine's power. When I engrave, I typically don't use air assist. There are different schools of thoughts about whether or not to use air assist for the engraving portion. The last thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to set a perimeter line so that we can cut this shape out completely on the laser. Alright, so all there is left to do now is send your design over to the laser. So arrange your material under the head and you can see that the layers that we set to engrave are engraving and the layers that we set to cut are cutting. And all that was made possible by the fact that we took our image and we were able to trace it and then adjust the different layers. And here's the finished item. Engraved on the outside and cut on the inside. All right guys, thanks for joining today. It is that easy to use the trace function to be able to convert an image into shapes, which then you can change the layers for cutting and for engraving. And the more of these tips and techniques you learn, you're able to combine that with your imagination and use those different techniques to create coasters and Christmas ornaments and you know really anything that you can imagine. If you found any value in today's video, if you would, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a thing, but it helps me out tremendously. And uh, as always, uh, thank you for watching.